Today I'm going to show you how to create an animated collapsible search bar in your iOS native script apps. And that's coming up in this video. Hey everybody, welcome back. Give me more native script. My name is Alex and on this channel, I show you how to level up your native script skills. So if you're not subscribed yet, click on that subscribe button and hit the little bell so you get the notifications when new tips, tricks and tutorials come out. And check out the link below for nativescripting.com where you can really level up your native script development skills by taking one of the courses over there that over 10,000 students have already taken. There's different kinds of courses based on the topic you want and there's full length advanced courses as well. Today we're continuing a tutorial that I started last week where I show you how to create a large title in the action bar on iOS apps that collapses automatically. This is part of the iOS 11 plus, not 11 plus, 11 and higher <laughs> design. And uh, today we're expanding that by adding one more feature to that and that's the search bar, the search bar that collapses automatically. You can see this in the email app for iOS, for example, where you have the large title and then underneath of it, you have a search bar that you can search through your emails. It's a pretty common feature. It's not a very common feature on Android. On Android, you probably just want to have the material design and you can probably even get away with using the NativeScript search bar widget which I'm gonna show you how to do in this video as well. So without further ado, let's start. All right, here we are. We're not starting from a blank slate like we usually do here because we're continuing last week's tutorial and this is where we left off. Here is the title bar. As you can see, if I scroll up a little bit, the action bar just becomes small, but if I scroll down, the action bar and the title become large. If you haven't seen this tutorial, check it out. All I've done since then is just create a list here. So now this is a list view instead of just a stack layout with a button and label. So now we have a list view that's bound to some items in the view model. Pretty standard stuff. And the reason I converted this to a list view is because usually when you have a search bar at the top, you use it with some kind of list so you can search through the list. This is our main page and this is our main page code behind. Here's where we are doing the little check for whether we're running on iOS or not. Now I gotta say that you can do the same thing on Android. There are ways to do this on Android, but this specific gesture and this whole flow is very iOS-like. It happened after iOS 11, and this fits in with the iOS style of things. It doesn't really make much sense to do this on Android, and that's why we're doing it here. If you are using Android, you can do something else. You can add a search bar, which is actually a widget that comes with native script. You can do this only for Android without doing it in iOS. Let's say we wrap our list view in a stack layout here, and then I'm gonna drop that search bar. And so there's our search bar. But since we're on iOS, we're gonna do it a little bit differently. This will show up on Android and you can use this on Android as a native script widget. But in order to keep it on Android, you can wrap it inside Android tags, just like that. So now that search bar will be present on Android only, not on iOS. For iOS, we got other plans. Let's get that search bar as part of our navigation controller. For that, we're gonna do some code. So back here in main page code behind, this is where we're setting the large title. Now I wanna separate this out a little bit and I wanna save off my navigation controller as a separate variable. So I'm gonna call that nav controller and it's this part right here, page.frame.ios.controller. So I'm gonna cut that, paste it here. And I want to have IntelliSense present. This is IntelliSense for the native platform. I already actually turned it on for this project but if you wanna see how to do it, I'll link to the video on how to do it down below in the description. Basically, if you go to NPM and you search for TNS platform declarations, you'll find this package and it'll tell you how you can add this to your project. All right, so let's see, we have the controller, but it's of type any. So what we wanna do is actually type it as an iOS type, as a UI navigation controller, because that's what it is. So now our navigation controller has the navigation bar and you can even see this if we type nav ctrl dot, we get the IntelliSense here and you can see we have navigation bar there somewhere. All right, so this basically is the same code we've had where we have the large title. Let's keep going. As part of the navigation controller, iOS 11 and higher provides something called a search controller. So let's create a search controller. Actually, I'm gonna make that a constant 
SC for search controller. And we're gonna initialize a new search controller dot alloc. This is the objective C way of creating a new instance of an object, actually just allocating it. It would be alloc dot init. This will create a new instance. But Objective C often has many different overrides for the init. So you can init, init with coder, init with nim, blah, blah, blah. This is the one we want. Init with search results controller. And we don't have a search results controller, but this is where you would put the controller that's going to control the search results. So since we don't have that, I'm just going to pass a null for now. There are a couple of different ways where you can display your search results. One way is you can create a new search results controller, which will pop up a new UI view and display your search results. Another way is you can just listen for text change events on this search bar that we're going to create. So we've created this search controller. Now we need to hook it up. And we do that through the navigation item property of the current UI view controller. So this right here is the navigation controller. We need to get its parent UI view controller. So const CTRL, which is the topmost view controller. And we're going to go to our nav controller and crawl up to its top view controller property. And now CTRL has a navigation item on it. This property right here is available on our UI view controller. And we can set its search controller to the one we created, SC, just like that. So now if we go here to our app, we don't see anything. But if I pull down on my list, oh, you get a little search bar in there. This is a kind of search bar that collapses and it's animated. And we still have our collapsible large title as well. Now, if you scroll all the way up, you can see that we have a collapsed title and now the search bar is gone. There is a way to make that search bar stick at the top though. So let's do that. Well, first of all, I want to show you that when you type in here, this is a very different behavior than if you were to implement this using the native script search widget. If you tap inside here, you can see that everything animates and the search goes to the top. You have your list in the background. You can't really interact with this list. You can't scroll it. You can only tap on it and that returns you back to your original view. So this allows you to type in some value, clear it, and you even have a cancel button there. If you want to listen to those events that are being generated, then you can implement a delegate that's going to listen for those search bar text change events. And you can find the docs, which is what I usually do is I just go to the Apple docs or a lot of the times I just Google for it and somebody on Stack Overflow probably already asked this question. So here is uh, the Google doc that tells you what function you need to implement to listen for those text change events from that search bar. This is not part of this video, but I could do a separate tutorial about that. If it's necessary, this video is just about getting that search bar in there. All right, so the next step is how do we make that search bar available on the page all the time? Well, that's pretty simple also. We go to the controller and the navigation item, and then it has a property called hides search bar when scrolling. So this is normally true, but if we set this to false, Check this out. Now the search bar is always there. And if I scroll up, the search bar stays at the top. It even has this pretty cool little translucent look where you can see the text behind it. So the behavior of it is pretty much the same, but now it stays at the top. This is a pretty cool little UI effect that comes with iOS out of the box. And because in native script, you can just write JavaScript code to access native APIs directly like this, like we just done. Then you can take advantage of that and use all those iOS features that might not always be available to you through native script UI widgets. And it makes sense for this because this is not a cross platform kind of thing. This is more iOS specific. So it's not for everybody, but it is available if you need this kind of UI. There you go, folks. Let's read some of your comments from this video on custom dialogue that came out last week. This is a video where I show you how to create a custom dialogue in NativeScript. A lot of people have been asking me to do this video, but uh, I didn't get too many comments about it. David Wilson says, give me more NativeScript. You got it, David. And Parallelo says, you don't need to move the VM object into the page's global scope. Your show dialogue will receive the event data object. With this, you can get the page and its binding context. Very good point, Parallelos. I mentioned this before on this channel in previous videos, 
when I put the VM or the view model object or any object really that you create and you put it in the global scope of the page outside of a function, it's gonna stick around unless it's unless you do it as a weak reference. And I go more into that in my advanced native script courses on nativescripting.com on how to handle memory better and how to improve your memory management and performance overall. But keep in mind, if you have an event like a tap on one of the UI views, then you can always get the page from that UI view. And the page also has a binding context and the binding context is your view model. So you can always get to it that way inside the context of a function. You don't need to have a globally scoped view model. All right, so thanks a lot for that. Do you want more native script tutorials like this one? Please help me help you and subscribe to this channel. Right now I'm in the growth stage, so I really do want to see more subscriptions. And I appreciate all of you that have subscribed so far. And if you want to connect with me on Twitter, I'm at DigitAlex over there. And I'll catch you in the next one.